Hello and welcome to part 19 of the series on how to create a chess game with React Chess. In this part we are going to work on the king. To start off we are first going to put the queen back in its position. We are opening up our Visual Studio Code editor and in our constants.ts we are moving the queen back to her position. As you see right here the position was 3,7. Let's refresh the page and the queen is back in her original position. Let's move the king in the center of the board. The king is on x4 and y7. Let's move it to y4 as well. And if we refresh, we see that the king is in the center of the board. Next thing we want to do is we want to get some logging on the movement of the king. Right now, if we drag the king, nothing is happening. For the king, we actually have the same movement as for the queen. The king can move in every direction but only one tile. The queen can move in every direction as much as she wants. So for example, if you move her here, she can move to there, 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 and she can stop wherever she wants to. She can move unlimited number of tiles until she comes to an obstacle or well, to another piece. The king, however, can also move in every direction, but only one tile. To get started with the logging, we have a function right here which is case pstyle.king and we want to create a function for it. Here we have queen move. We are going to make a new one which will be king move. And right here we are going to return false by default. And then we can reference it inside of here. valid move equals this.king move. Initial position, desire position, team and the board state. Like so. We don't need to add a break here because it's the last case in switch statement. And let's just log moving king for now. Let's save it up, refresh the page and let's see what happens if you move our king. As you can see, when we move the king, we get a log which says moving the king. Now that we have the logging, we want to check if it is moving in a horizontal, vertical or diagonal position or direction. We have heard this before with the queen. The queen can also move in those positions or in those directions, but the queen can move a maximum of eight tiles because that's the size of the board. So what we can do is we can actually grab the code for the queen, copy it, and we could actually paste it right here. And what we could do then is we could lower this to two, I think. So let's first try this out with the queen. So this might, might look a little bit weird, but we're going to refresh the page, just grab the queen and we can only move one tile right now. Let's move it to here. Cannot. Cannot because that's two tiles or more. If we move one tile, that is possible. So just by changing eight to two, we limit the amount of tiles that the queen can move. So we also limit, yeah, well, the tiles she can move. <laughs> so we're going to leave this at eight and we actually want to copy that over to here so we can move this piece only one square but before we are going to do that we are going to change this if statement so as you can see right here before we had a ternary operator and the ternary operator is actually a shorthand version of the normal if else statement as you can see we have written down the if else statement because we have an if else if and else and in a ternary operator you can only assign two values and we need to assign three values to make it a little bit more interesting and to show you a little bit more about ternary operators and what you can do with them, I'm going to show you what you can do with them. So instead of writing this if, else if and else statement, we are going to write this in one ternary operator. Oh well one, it might be two. So if you would like to try this out yourself, I suggest you stop the video and try to come up with a solution. I'm going to show you the solution that we are going to implement. So right here, 
we have our multiplier x or our multiplier x and we want to say that it is equal to the desired position dot x smaller than initial position at x so if our desired position is on the left of our initial position it should be one otherwise it should be one but what if it is on the same position so right now it is minus one if it is smaller or if it is on the left and it is one if it is in the middle or in the right what if we change this to if desired position dot x is bigger than initial position dot x and i'm going to finish this up like so and remove this right here and i'm going to break it down for you so we can actually remove this those lines those seven lines are now written inside of this one line or well, actually two lines but let's try to explain it we have our ternary operator our ternary operator is an operator which has a uh, variable equals and then here we have the if else statement and then we have a value for example uh, one and then we have a or well we got we can actually use a string and a value uh, for if the else is true okay so here we have a variable and that variable will be assigned a value true or false if the statement is true which it is then it will evaluate the first value which will result in to the variable being true if it is not true it results in the second variable which will be false well this is a simple statement and if we make this false then this should be uh, false because the second one is the else and the statement is false what we did right here is we extended it we created a false or well actually we created a statement and instead of assigning another value in the else we actually create a new ternary operator so right here we have um, a variable and here we check okay is the statement true or false if the statement is true we assign this value to the variable then the variable will be true okay if the statement is false which it is then we look at the right side of the column what do we see there we see another ternary operator okay then we check this is the ternary operator true yes then we return true so then the variable will be true if this ternary operator is false then we will return false so that is how you can actually chain ternary operators behind here you can actually also put another one and another one and another one depending on how many you need if it gets too big for example four five or six i think it's not that readable anymore but in situations where you have two values it's really good to use i think and in situations where you have three values it it might be nice to use that depends on the situation so now we have our multiplier x and let's try to do the same with the multiplier y if you want to you can pause the video right here and try to come up with the solution yourself we are going to write desired position dot y smaller than initial position dot y if it is smaller then we say minus one if the desired position dot y is bigger than our initial position dot y then we assign one to it and if it is not smaller and not bigger then we assign zero to it so now we can also remove this and we have our multiplier x and y let's save it up and check it out if it still works let's see uh, our queen yes our queen can move eight tiles yet nice so as you can see we can move diagonally upward downward left right so it's still working, but now it's just uh, written in ternary operators. 
we are also going to use this solution for the king. So we are going to copy over this to the king right here. And we are going to change this to two. Save it up. Refresh the page. And if all works, we should be able to move the king only one tile. As you can see, when we move it one tile in any direction, it works. If we try to move it two tiles, it doesn't work, or seven or eight. So we actually already have the movement of the king. Nice, good job. Next thing we are going to do is we're going to put the king back. So right here, let's put it back at seven. And then we also want to use the function which we have right here, same position where we use it or where we could use it so we already did this with the queen same position pass and desired position let's check up here we have the same situation right here we have best position and then desired position like so and then we can just remove everything behind there and this situation gets repeated multiple times. So if we copy this over, and I'm just going to copy over this text right here. Let's copy it. And then if we highlight this and press Ctrl D, we'll see that we jump to the next place where it occurs. Press Ctrl D again, another place, and yet again one, another one, and that's it. Now we have all the occurrences of that piece of code. And if we press Ctrl V, we paste it. And now we have pasted that function into every place where we have just selected it. So if we save it up right now, we should be able to move. And everything should be able to work. Nice. So let's try and play a game of chess, shall we? Right now, we can move the white pieces, the black pieces. We can even play en passant, like so. We cannot play that. We can play that and that. We can move the queen around. We can grab other pieces. We can move the horse as well, or the knight, like so. And then to finish it off, let's try the rook as well. It cannot move diagonally, that's correct. Let's try move up. Yes. Okay, good. So we actually have the movement of every piece down. We have it working. And the next thing we want to do is we want to add some extra rules. So before we end this episode, we are going to look to the rules that we are still going to implement. We are going to open up our Visual Studio code. And right here, we are going to remove the loggings that we have so that when we are developing the application further we don't have the logins from before because we won't need them anymore i hope let's see the logins are removed nice and then next up we want to add some to do's so right here we have is valid move function let's add them above here to do the first thing that we need to do is, well, maybe it is even the most important thing. And that is, if we move a pawn to the other side of the board, it should get promotion. And what does this mean? This means that the pawn will be able to transform or be replaced with a knight, rook, bishop or queen. Really important. Next thing is that the king, he can move which is great, but the king is not able to move into a dangerous position like this. So we should prohibit the move from moving in danger or actually prevent, prevent the king from moving into danger. Next thing we have on our list is that when the king has it moved and when, let's see, we have a rook that has it moved either doesn't matter which side, there is a special move called castling. So right now the king is not has not moved at all and the two rooks 
haven't moved either. If this rook didn't move and this king didn't move either, then we can move the king two spaces to the left. Let's see, uh, two spaces to the left, and the rook can move right to the king. And that is all happening in one turn. So the final position would look something like this. We have a king which is moving two spaces to the left, and then the rook which is on the right. We can also castle the other side. So that would look something like this. We have our rook right here, and then we have our king, let's see, right here. Our king was right here, one, two to the right, and then the rook jumps over the king. So, add castling. Another important rule. Next thing we want to add is the ending of the game. So, how does a game of chess end? Well, a game of chess ends when the king is checkmated or stalemated. I don't think there are any other ways a game can end. But if I'm wrong, please correct me because I'm not uh, a really uh, experienced chess player. So, uh, when is a king checkmated? A king is checkmated when it cannot move to any other space and it is currently under attack. So we need to add checkmate to the game. And another thing we need to add is we need to add checks. What is a check? A check is a situation where the king is under attack, for example right now. And when this happens, black must protect its king by moving away, putting a piece in front of it or taking the attacking piece. So black should play this or anything else actually could also move away but he cannot for example play this because right now the king is still in danger the last thing we need to add is we need to add the stalemate so stalemate is a situation where the king cannot make any legal moves for example if the king is in let's say this position i guess no it's not how do we get a stalemate this is not a stalemate. Please, how do we make a stalemate? I think this is a stalemate. Except that the enemy still has all his pieces. We need to still remove them. So once all the enemy pieces are erased, and that one as well actually, Black's turn. Black uh, is not checked, so it's not on attack. But it cannot move up because of this bishop. It cannot uh, take this pawn because it protects the, the bishop protects it. It cannot move to the right because the pawn and the horse uh, attack it. It cannot move down because the bishop will take it. And it cannot move, well, the other down. This was down right because the rook protects the pawn. So in this situation, the black king is still made it and it will result in a draw. At still mate. At less at this before checkmate so it makes a little bit more sense <laughs> and then we have I think a nice little to-do list for finishing up the game if I have forgotten any rules please let me know in the comments down below I don't know every rule of chess so I might have overlooked one and then of course we need some UI elements like a timer which tells how long the players have to play and perhaps also a nice list of which pieces already have been taken. With this, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you could follow along. Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.